Hi, and welcome to another episode of Easy Eats for Everyone. Today, we're gonna to be doing protein-packed pretzel bites. This is using the same dough that we used in the past for our pizzas, but we're gonna be changing it up a little bit. Before we get started in our kitchen, please make sure you pull up your hair, wash your hands for at least 20 seconds, and if you can't social distance, grab a mask. We'll see you in the kitchen. Before we get started, please make sure that you carefully set your oven to 425 degrees. You will need to preheat your oven before making these pretzel bites. Please remember to check your oven to make sure you have nothing stored inside of it. Sometimes people do that if they don't have a ton of space and we don't want to cause a fire or have anyone burn themselves. Again, your degrees will be on that knob and so you're gonna put it to 425. If you do have a digital oven, make sure you set that to 425 and hit bake so that we can preheat our oven to the correct temperature. These pretzel bites are gonna cook at a high heat for a short period of time. Your pretzel bite kit will include protein packed dough, extra flour to put on the surface and your dough to make sure it doesn't stick, baking soda, that's one tablespoon of baking soda, coarse salt, and a cinnamon sugar mixture. From your home, you will need a baking sheet and you can use nonstick or you can spray with nonstick uh, cooking oil or you can use parchment paper. You will need a regular teaspoon, a knife, and it doesn't have to be a sharp knife. You can use a butter knife, a plastic knife, one cup of water, a pan, and we're gonna be boiling the water in there, as well as a bowl that we're gonna mix the boiling water as well as the baking soda in. Lastly, you'll need a little bit of extra water on the side and that can be room temperature. A quick note about knife safety before we get started here. You want to make sure that you're never touching the blade, that whoever is using the knife when it comes to cutting our pretzel bites has a good grip on it. Um, their fingers are not by the blade here. Even if this is a butter knife or even a plastic knife, we always want to remember that safety before skills, meaning we stay as safe as possible and that starts right from the beginning. When you're cutting your dough, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have a nice firm grip on the knife and that there's no fingers in the way. We never want anyone to lose a finger. You really won't even have to have a second hand on your cutting board or surface because you're just gonna be lightly going through, dragging the knife through the dough. And you will see that when we do our dough in just a moment. The first step is going to be taking a little bit of flour and putting it on the surface you're rolling your dough on. You're gonna grab a little bit of your dough from your kit, not the whole thing, about a third or so. Place it on the flour. It will be sticky, that's okay. You're gonna take a little more flour and sprinkle on top. And now that you have flour underneath and on top, just kind of roll it around until it's nicely coated. So now you see it's not really sticking to my hands. Starting it in a little ball, you're going to squeeze and then putting your fingers in the center of the dough, start rolling. We are going to make this into a snake-like piece. Keep on rolling out again. Start in the middle and rolling out. If it gets a little thicker, that's okay. Just start there and roll. When you're rolling, you're rolling and kind of pulling it. So you're gonna roll and then add some pressure to roll it back. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is not a perfect shape, but you do want it to be about a foot long. Once you have your dough snake, you're gonna use that knife and safely cut in approximately one inch pieces, meaning that each snake should get about six pretzel bites out of it. A serving size of this is six bites. So we're going to, remember I said, just drag. You don't need to have your hand close to the knife. You're going to just pull. And again, I'm purposely making it so our Pretzel bites are different sizes. So you can see they don't have to be perfect. Some can be smaller, some can be a little bit bigger. With this, we don't have to worry about 
a vast difference in size changing the cooking time because it's more about making sure that it's the same thickness versus the same length. Once you have your pretzel bites, you're going to put them aside and then we're gonna work on boiling some water. So you might be thinking, well, why didn't I boil the water before I started doing the pretzel bites? For a couple of reasons. First of all, I wanna make sure that when you're boiling the water, you're really paying attention to what's going on on the stove. If you go to boil your water and then you go to make your pretzel bites, you might forget about it, which could cause a fire. Someone could walk by and burn themselves. So we wanna fully, fully have our attention on the stove whenever we're doing anything, including boiling water. So please make sure that you grab your pan and grab that one cup of water. I'll see you at the stove. We are going to place our pan on the stove, making sure that the handle is never out. You never want your handle in a position where someone could walk by, knock into it, flip it over, burn themselves. So handles are always going to go towards the inside. We're going to add one cup of water to our pan. And in this case, we are going to put our stove on high. Now see how quickly that flame came up and got the pan hot. Again, please make sure that only one person is doing this, no one is around your stove, and that you're keeping an eye on this. This will take a few minutes to boil. Once we get our water boiling, we'll check back here and I will go over the next step. Before we get our boiling water, we're going to take that one tablespoon of baking soda and put it in the bottom of your bowl. You're going to grab an oven mitt. Notice our water is almost at a full boil. Boiling is when it hits a certain temperature and you see bubbles coming up. So we're gonna wait because it's not completely boiled, but we're almost there. See, it's boiling on one side, not really the other. There we go. It's going all the way across. We're going to turn off the stove first. Number one thing, using a pot holder, you're going to grab onto your pan. Make sure no one is around you. Look before you turn around. Transfer the boiling water. Can you hear that? That's because it's that hot pan and boiling water. Again, be careful. And you're going to add your water to the baking soda. Make sure that you put your pan back on a safe surface, meaning do not put this down directly on plastic. Do not put it directly on your counter. Your best bet is to go back to your stove and put it on a burner that was further away so it can cool off. That way the handle's in, the surface is on something safe to put something that hot on and let people around you know, hey, there is a hot pan on the stove. Please remember again, this has boiling water and so you wanna keep it away from the edge and make sure people around you are aware that this is hot. You're going to take your spoon and mix your baking soda in the water. Then you're going to place your pretzel bite on the spoon and drop it in your soda water. Moving it around, pick that right up, put it on your tray. You can even just drop some of the pieces in there, a few at a time if that's easier. Just make sure you use a spoon to take it out. Now you might be saying, well, why are we even doing this? And that's because the soda water mixture is going to act as an agent to give us a crispy outside, even though we're not frying and we're baking. You're going to do this with all of your pieces of dough placing them on the tray about a half an inch or so apart. Again, please make sure you are using a spoon. And 
once we are done, we are going to bake this in a preheated oven at 425 degrees for about seven minutes. See you in a moment. So anytime you use a stove or an oven, obviously it's hot but this is really hot because we're at 425 degrees. So please make sure a couple of things. One, that there's no one around and that you let people know, I'm opening up the oven, just so that no one walks by and burns themselves. Two, when you put the food in the oven and take it out, we're gonna use that oven mitt again, okay? Just so you don't burn yourself on this oven uh, door or on the racks, we just want you to be really, really careful. We're gonna open our oven. Place the cookie sheet directly in the center, making sure you get it all the way back. We'll see you in seven to 10 minutes. Now, while our uh, pretzel bites are cooking, I just wanna review a couple of quick safety points. Again, safety before skills. One, when you're using a knife, make sure that it's someone who's capable of using the knife and someone who's not gonna to touch that sharp blade, that your fingers are staying away from anything that you're cutting. Two, when we're boiling our water or using anything on the stovetop, we always wanna make sure that the handle's not sticking out so that no one can walk by, knock it over, burn themselves, get their clothing caught on it. So again, super, super safe. Three, whenever we're using an oven, we're gonna use an oven mitt, that means putting items in and taking them out. Those three steps will help keep you super safe while you're doing this and make sure that no one can hurt themselves unintentionally. There's nothing worse than when you're making something super delicious and good and it gets ruined because someone hurt themselves and you have to stop what you're doing. So again, making sure we're paying attention, that we're doing things in the safest way possible while we're learning these fun skills. So it's been about nine minutes. I did check on these at seven minutes and they didn't have that nice golden brown that I like. So I waited two more minutes, but that's all this needs. Again, carefully opening up the stove, making sure that no one is around and using my oven mitt. I'm gonna pull these out of the oven and place them on a safe surface. I'm going to close the oven and make sure I turn it completely off. Again, we don't ever want to leave our oven on and make it so it's a dangerous place for anyone. More importantly, look at these. In just a moment, I'm going to show you how you're going to get that nice salt or sweet topping. I've let these cool for only about a minute or two, and now we're gonna either put the salt on top or the cinnamon sugar. Now, if you don't put something on top of these and you try to put it, something on there, it's gonna just fall right off. We can either use water, and you can either use a glove, you can use a brush, you can use a little spoon, but you want just a tiny, tiny bit on top of the pretzel. You can just use your finger to gently put a little bit of water on top, and then you can sprinkle your salt or your cinnamon and sugar right on top. And then it sticks to it and it's not gonna fall off. If you have butter at home and you wanna melt it, you can melt it in the microwave or better yet, if you spray butter, you put a little spritz on each one, that will give it a nice buttery taste without adding a ton of calories. A lot of times you'll see these recipes with the butter and that's just because it gives it that taste, but we wanna keep these healthier. That's why we're using water. Either way you choose to do this, go ahead, it's not wrong. When you're done, they'll easily come off. They're that nice golden brown. Again, the salt sticks right to it or if you wanted something a little bit sweeter, our cinnamon sugar mixture. I would let these cool maybe another minute or two before you pop them in your mouth. Another great thing to have with these, a little bit of mustard to dip them in or even a little bit of melted cheese. We had done our taco cups for some of you and that came with nacho cheese. That would be something else delicious you could dip these into. If you had fun today, please remember to like our video, subscribe to the Easy Eats YouTube channel and we will see you soon. Don't forget, cooking should be fun and easy for everyone.